Spider-Man 2 has officially been released worldwide for the PlayStation 5. And as expected, the reception from fans and critics alike has been positive to say the absolute least. And it makes a lot of sense. First two entries in the series so far were fantastic. So it's no surprise that releasing Insomniac from the shackles of the PS4 hardware had a significant effect on overall quality. And with all things considered, I really do think that Insomniac has outdone themselves yet again. Spoilers ahead for Spider-Man 2, if you haven't played it and don't want to know what happens, watch this video afterwards. But anyway, the first thing I actually want to discuss is one of the big reasons people are going to be buying this game, the traversal. Now I will say, Insomniac has really changed things up in terms of speed. And in order to figure out exactly how much faster you can go compared to the last game, I went to the exact same location in both games then recorded how long it took to travel 1,000 meters down to the exact frame. And the difference is actually huge. When looking at Spider-Man 2 compared to Spider-Man Miles Morales, it actually looks like the games before Spider-Man 2 were being played in slow motion, which was mostly the PS4's fault. And that's not even talking about any of the new moves they've implemented. And as you can see on screen, it gets absolutely insane the level of speed you can achieve here if you know what you're doing. And as an added bonus, I just want to throw in, there's a setting to change your swing assistance. And what this basically does is remove your training wheels and essentially make swinging an all new challenge in of its own. Because in order to effectively get to where you need to go, you need to time your swings just right so you don't hit the ground. And as an added added bonus, you can turn on fall damage if you really want to feel some pain. Now, I'll be honest, it's certainly a learning curve, and it may take you some time to master this new form of swinging, and it may frustrate you at times when you have a lot of speed and you hit the ground, but trust me, if you get it down, you can fly across the map. So it's definitely worth getting used to if you have the motivation to try it out. But with that being said, that actually leads me to one of my problems with the game's traversal system. The loop-de-loop -loop move in the skill tree is so janky pretty much everywhere I tried to use it in. Now, let me explain. If you've played the game, you've probably used the loop-de-loop -loop move next to a building at least once or twice. And you've probably noticed that when doing this, the game pushes either Peter or Miles to the side slightly in order to prevent them from colliding with the building the web is anchored to. But in doing this, in most cases I had at least, I would get pushed too far to the side and hit the building next to me and die because I played with fall damage turned on the whole time. This actually happened a surprising amount of times when it really shouldn't have. And I'm not even talking about with no swing assist, because I didn't really turn that off until around the end of the game when I got more of a grasp on the new mechanics. But anyway, time to talk about the combat. Now the combat is actually significantly improved. The gadget changes and the new abilities you're able to use, especially the symbiote ones, really add to the power you feel when you're taking on some of these enemies. The combat in Spider-Man 2 is essentially the same as its predecessors, but with a couple key additions and changes to spice things up. First off, there's a new parry move, where you basically have to time your input just right and you can block and then counter an attack. You can parry pretty much any attack except the crushing ones those you have to dodge. And since we're already on the topic of combat, let's talk about a couple of these boss fights because I actually have mixed feelings about them. Granted, I did play the game on the highest difficulty, but even on lower difficulties, I found the fights to have sort of an annoying amount of phases. Now, don't get me wrong, I enjoy boss fights that have more than one phase, but it gets frustrating when the phases are pretty much exactly the same every time, and there's like four of them. It would have been nice to see a little more variety in a couple of these fights. Now, this definitely doesn't apply to every single boss in the game. For example, the Miles vs. Peter boss fight, which is my favorite boss fight of all time from any Spider-Man game, but I will admit a few of them certainly felt a little sluggish. A lot of that is probably just me being bad at video games though. I actually really enjoyed the combat in this entry. It's quick, stylish, and surprisingly smooth and easy to pick up. I thought the new changes here were going to be super hard to learn the first time around, but I was actually pleasantly surprised at how fast it clicked with me. And that's saying the same for the swinging too. If you've played either of the previous Spider-Man games recently, or even at all, you're likely to transition seamlessly into Spider-Man 2 with pretty much no issues. I mean, unless you're playing with fall damage on your first run like me. Let's talk about the story next. Now this is where we get more into spoiler territory, so spoiler alert. The story in Spider-Man 2 is without a doubt my favorite Spider-Man story of all time. 
That's including the movies, the TV shows, comics, any piece of media. This game tops it all, at least for me. Everything about this campaign is so incredible, I could not stop playing it from the moment I booted up the game. All of the villains, including Sandman, Kraven, Mysterio, and of course Venom, have never been as awesome as they are in this game. Tony Todd as Venom and Jim Peary as Kraven certainly steal the show in some parts. The sheer love and dedication Insomniac showed to each and every detail does wonders to make this game phenomenal. And this isn't exclusive to just the villains. Insomniac has without a doubt in my mind created the best Spider-Man universe to date. And if you're watching this video to see if you should buy the game or not, I have to tell you that you are certainly missing out if you have not experienced this game for yourself. It is truly a masterpiece. But with that being said, no game, no matter how amazing it is, is without its flaws. And although I'm happy to say I didn't experience any game breaking glitches or soft locks during my platinum playthrough, there were some issues that I feel I need to bring up. Now, I already talked about the loop de loop move from before being a little janky in most areas and kinda hard to use, but that's not the only thing I wanna talk about. Take for instance this bug where enemies spawn inside of walls and even inside of NPC cars when they shouldn't. This actually happened to me a lot more than you might think, and it's one of the more annoying glitches to deal with because you either need to be creative in how you reach them or just restart or give up on the mission altogether if they're in a spot you simply can't access. Oh yeah, and there's also this bug where crimes just for some reason decide not to spawn at all, leaving just the waypoints and little pieces of debris in their place no enemies to be found. And not really a bug, but I just wanted to point this out because a lot of people have been complaining on Twitter. There's a point in the game where Peter rips off the Venom suit and for a period of time you lose your symbiote abilities. But close to the end of the game, you obtain the anti-venom suit and you get your powers back. The only difference being that the suit is white rather than black. And the problem with this is that you're locked to this one color for the rest of the game. Even after you beat the entire story and unlock the black suits again, for some reason the tendrils are still white even though you're using the venom suit, not the anti-venom. And what's even stranger is that the webs change color but not the tendrils. So it almost feels like it's a bug that's not supposed to happen. Like the tendrils are supposed to change but some type of anomaly in the code is keeping it from happening. And it sucks because one of the most beloved suits of all time, the Raimi symbiote suit, isn't able to be unlocked until close to the end of the game when the tendrils permanently change. So you never really get to see the suit in all its glory. Kind of a shame. But I'm sure they'll end up fixing this in the future. Overall, the problems with this game are things that could very well be patched out in later updates if Insomniac continues to listen to the community. Things like New Game Plus, Weather, and Time of Day options. Maybe even a mission select for missions you've already completed. There's just so much that the previous entries already have that it shouldn't be hard to implement here. Alright, I want to mention a couple more things I noticed while playing, but we've been going for a while, so I'll speed things up a little bit. The symbiote missions are way too hard as Miles. The Mysteriums start off really hard and then get unbelievably easy. There are 10 less trophies to collect in this game compared to Spider-Man PS4 and Miles Morales. Hopefully they add more with New Game Plus. They kept MJ's stealth missions in here and they said they don't care that she's OP, but they could have very well made the Spider-Man stealth missions a lot better and more fun to play. Because there are hardly any missions where it actually requires you to maintain stealth in order to pass. More often than not, it's more fun and even more effective to just go in guns blazing and fight everyone at once with your new symbiote strength. But moving on, one of the big things they used to market this game was the addition of over 60 new suits for both Peter and Miles. But what's surprising and actually kind of disappointing, at least to me, is that of all of the suits that are in Spider-Man 2 for Miles and Peter, a lot of them are from the previous two games. Let me break it down for you. Peter has 39 total suits. 15 of them are from Spider-Man PS4. A whopping 40%. And before you say, oh Logan calm down, most of them have selectable styles for extra customization, only 20 of the suits have styles and most of them are for the old suits, not the new ones. Same thing goes for Miles, except he has slightly more styles, only having 8 suits with no alternate styles as opposed to Peter's 19. Now don't get me wrong, the suits they have are fantastic and they're some of the best suits in Spider-Man history except this one. But if they're advertising this game as having so many suits, and in reality they only have about like 40, that's kind of unfortunate. I hope they add some more in a future DLC or something if we get one. 
the meantime though, we can all collectively hate on this one until hopefully Insomniac changes it or gives us a new one. But anyway, this game, as expected, has had an immensely successful launch so far. I absolutely love this game and even with all its flaws, I'd still give it a 10 out of 10. It's without a doubt my favorite Spider-Man game of all time and I can't recommend it enough. If you've got a PS5, this game is definitely a must-have.